Hi, greetings of the day. Once again, warm welcome to our channel with a new video on forecasting weekly price, support and resistance levels. Before we start, I would request all of my viewers to watch it till end as skipping at times, you may miss something important, which is not the part of the presentation. I have backtested this strategy for around six months and mostly the support and resistance has been well respected by market with an accuracy level of more than 80 percent. As we all know that there is no holy grail in the market and going forecast means we are expecting the market to obey our price level. If it did, it means we were right. But if it not, then it doesn't mean that the system has a flaw. It simply means that market has taken a new path and we have to align ourselves to that particular new path. So let's start the key point used in this calculation. That will be the part of some knowledge of IV, that is the implied volatility, standard deviation, and the Fibonacci levels. Let us take exactly each one of them one by one. So what is implied volatility? A low implied volatility environment tells us that the market is not expecting the stock price to move much away from the current stock price. This lack of IV results in a range of outcomes with a narrow standard deviation of the stock near the current stock price. A high implied volatility environment tells us that the market is expecting the stock price to move away from the current price with a greater magnitude. This high IV results in a range of outcomes with a wide SD away from the stock price. So that is, there is nothing new in this particular presentation, but I have just mentioned it over here for a brief revision. Standard deviation. The standard deviation of a stock determines the dispersion of a data set in a relation to its mean or the stock price. A high standard deviation represents volatile stocks, while a low standard deviation usually points to consistent blue chip stocks. The greater the standard deviation, the riskier the stock. Again, there is nothing new in this presentation. It is just for a revision purpose. Now, what we are trying to use the standard deviation our way, we are trying to find out a price bracket using one standard deviation. Now, how to find that? There are two methods. Finding the standard deviation of a stock can be cumbersome with the complexity of the old school black scores model. And this imply range are based on the annual expected moves. The other way, we can use the expected formula, which allow us to calculate the one standard deviation based on the range of a stock on a days to expiration, the stock price and the IV of a stock. So let us consider the second one. Now, how we are trying getting or how we are trying to get the expected moving price, that is EM, that is one SD expected move. Stock price will be used for that, IV will be used for that and the days to expiration or the days for which we are calculating the support and resistance since we are talking of weekly so it will be seven days how it is done em that is the expected price move will be the stock price s naught multiplied by the iv into the square root of dt upon 365 why we are using 365 because we are using the annual volatility but we are trying to forecast the weekly market level so we will divide it by 365 now we are using some Fibonacci ratio because we know that the price will not move into a standard deviation range in a one way. So say for example, if a standard deviation comes out to be of around 500 points. So price is not going to move 500 points in one direction in a one way. So it will go first to 0.268, then it will move to 0.382 to Fibo level, 0 0.5, 0 0.618, 1, 1 1.236, 1 1.618. There are some key Fibonacci ratios from which a price can take a reversal from either the support or the resistance. So what I have backtested is that price generally when passes 0.268, it definitely tries to touch 0 0.382, 0 0.5 and 0 0.618. 0 0.618 becomes a major reversal of a trend change, either from support or from resistance. If it surpasses 0.618, then it will definitely touch 1, 1 1.236. And again, a very, very strong reversal can happen at 1.618 level. Again, there's a part of a golden ratio, 0.618 and 1.618 both. Now let us see uh, exactly how we are collating all those things into a one simple Excel file. So we will be using IV, we will be using the standard deviation, and we will be using this Fibonacci ratio. So let us move down to our Excel file. 
I hope you are getting my Excel file. So what we are trying to do, let us move into the month of August. Now, here is the calculation part. What I'm trying to use, I'm trying to use a one standard deviation price. I am taking a closing price on Friday to forecast the next coming week support and resistances based on the Fibonacci ratio. Now, for that, first I will calculate what is the one standard deviation price based on the closing level. So say for example, if 16,450 is the closing price on a particular Friday, then what is the standard deviation? I will take the annual volatility multiplied by square root of seven, that is DTE, multiplied by standard deviation price, the nifty closing price and divided by square root of 365 days. Fine. Now I am getting the annual volatility. I have an historical AV chart over here. So if I'm taking 16,450. So say for example, we first focus over here on this Friday and take it to be 16,238. And the date was 6th of August. Let us move on and find what is the historical volatility on 6th of August. Okay, it is 24.54. So, here I will write 24.54. So one standard deviation based on the closing price and the annual volatility, it is coming out to be 551 points. So Nifty can either move higher the 550 point, 551 points or lower the 551 points. And not exactly in a one go. So it will take a step by step later fashion. How? Based on this FIBI ratio, 0 0.236, 0 0.382, and up to 1.618, this will become our resistances and this will become our support. How to find out the resistances? That if price moves above 16,238 and passes 0 0.236, that is 16,368. So I have added this price. And this price, how I have got, I have multiplied this price into this FIBO ratio. I have got this price added with the closing price. I have got this one. Then same way, this one, this one, this one, up to 1.618. Same way, I have subtracted this price from this price and I have found these levels. That will try to become our major supports. So now, how we have to correlate? Monday, the market opens at 16.281. The high made was 16.320. The low was 16.179 and the close was 16.258. In both the cases, low and high or the closing price market has not breached both of the resistance or the support. So there is no trade as per here. Now, since we are using a standard deviation, so we can use plus minus of 25 points range as per the current Nifty price to be a <clears throat> on a safer side. But if you want to go ahead with an exact point pattern, then also you can use the same and then you have to wait for the price to breach that one. So on Monday, it is 320, but here it is 368. So I will trade that this trade was not initiated on Monday. On Tuesday, the high was 16359, very close to this 0.236. So I will take a buy trade. The low was 16280, still not breached the first support. So I am into trade. The next day it opens 6327. It made a high of 16332. Uh, sorry, 163 uh -huh. and 16162 was the low. Again, still my first support was not breached and the close was 16282. On Thursday, open was 16303. I did 375 that the price moved and closed at 16364. So we are comfortably on the trade. On Friday, again, the open was 385. Price made a high of 16543, very close to 0.5. And it closes on 16.529 level. So at between 0.5 and 0.618. I have said that 0.5 and 0.618 are the major reversal area a price can move. So this is how we can understand that how the price will move in the coming week. Now, if you are an option player, you can well define your strategy based on these prices, based on the standard deviation. And if you are a naked FNO player, then also you can use this price levels. You can also use it for intra, then you have to use square root of one instead of square root of seven. So you are predicting the intraday price level based on the previous day price level. 
and the annual volatility will remain same. After that, let us now here we closed on this Friday, we closed on 16.529. So the next bill, we put 16.529 over here and we have got a new standard deviation of 561 points and a new resistances and a new support. So on Monday, I made a high of 16.589. So my uh, first level is not activated either for the resistance or for the support. On Tuesday, I made a high of 16.628 and closed near to 16.614. Still, I will not be in that trade. On Wednesday, it's open on 16.691. I will be executing my buy trade. Now, it has made a high of 16.701 and closed somewhere at 16.568 level. On Friday, it again makes a low of 16.382, very close to this level. So either I can close my trade or I can just hold on. And then it makes a high of 16.509, low of 16.376. Again, the resistance, uh, the first support was taking a good uh, basis over there. And we close at 16.450. Likewise, now when I move down to the new 16.450, let me change also uh, Friday, that was 20th of August 28th of August, what was the annual volatility? It was 24.07. So I will change AV also here. Right. So I will get these prices. So on Monday, I got a high of 16.592. This level was breached comfortably. I will activate the buy trade and it closes on 16.495, well respected. Open again at 561, made a high of 16647, close to this level. And then it moves to 16495 low and high of 16 and the close of 16624.6. Still, my buy trade is active. Wednesday 16654 was the open, close to 0.382. And then I made a high of 16712, well respected over here. Low of 16617 and a closing of 16.634, somewhere here. Thursday, again, 6.627, okay, comfortable trade going on, 16.683.7, that's the high I made, and a low of 16.636.9, that's okay. Again, open 16.642, high of 16.722, exactly again 0.5, and Low of 16.565, again, retrace to 0.236 level and a close of 16.705. So this is the way you can actually find how the price will retrace. So if you are into buy trade, it will first pass this level, try to reach this. Major reversal zones will be this and this. And when it is reversing, again, it will be taking the support back to this levels over here. Once it goes below this level, you have to reverse your trade, you have to go back to the sell side and then you have to find starting the support, which will become the resistance for that particular trade. So this is how uh, I have just demonstrated the month of August. Uh, same way I have done it for September. It also works very well. Uh, January also I have done. We can just check January for once uh, one Friday. Say for example, we take a closing price of 14,347. 14,347. What was the IV? What was the date? It was 8th of January. Let me move down to 8th of January. Okay, 8th of January, 28.9. So I put 0.289 and I got this particular resistance and supports. Now what happens on Monday? We open 14.474 close to this level so we can activate our buy trade and high of 14.498 was done and a low of 14.383 and close of 14.484, same near to this level only. Tuesday, we made a high of 14.473, high of 14.590, very close to this level, low of 14.432 and a close at 14.563, exactly at this level. On Wednesday, 
we make a high of 14.639. That's this one, open with this price. 14.653, we made a high. 14.435 was the low, respecting this particular label. And we closed 14.564 around, that is 0 0.382 around. Likewise, Thursday, I open at 14.550. Made a high of 14.617, again getting resistance at this point. 14.357 was the low. This was not breached and closes at 14.433, near to this level only. So this is how we have traded for January also. So I have backtested each and every week from last uh, October or say till this September. And all of the month have wonderfully respected the labels. Uh, I can say 80% and above was the success ratio. Somewhere, uh, some weeks were not active or even we have taken the stop loss, but then we have reversed our trade and we have got the super results. Uh, I have just checked for November in Bank Nifty. Uh, this is the prices of Bank Nifty and this worked very well also. So this is how uh, you can calculate the weekly support and resistance for your trades. You can plan your trades accordingly based on the option data, FNO, whatsoever it may be. And... <clears throat> If you want that your option data is saying that the price is moving into the two standard deviation band, you can just change the standard deviation to two and you can find out the new levels. Likewise, you can change here the standard deviation to two and you can find out the new levels. So you can easily find that market based on the uh, option expiry data that the market is behaving on a one SD scale or a two SD scale, and definitely it will work out wonderfully. Uh, this is not a holy grail, again I'm saying, but it will give you a very good clear picture in advance of support and resistance, either on the buy side or on the sell side. So that's uh, all in this video. Hope you guys have liked it. If you have liked it, please put on your comments, whatsoever uh, you want in the next videos or any doubt in this video. Please do like, subscribe, that is the most important thing and click on the notification bell icon so that you get all the latest updates uh, whenever I post my new video. Once again, thanks and thanks for sharing all your time.